Thanks to Real Link for sponsoring this video. The Sony X95L versus the TCL QM8. Is this even a fair fight? Maybe not, but that ain't gonna stop me. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today I am super excited to pit Sony's flagship mini LED TV against TCL's best mini LED TV. I've called the Sony X95L the best LCD TV I've ever tested and I've said that the TCL QM8 might just be the best value in TV right now, despite a few notable quirks. Is this really a fair fight? I mean, there's over $2,000 separating these 85 inch TVs. In terms of price, Sony's X90L is a closer match to the TCL QM8, but in terms of technology and the fact that these are the best LCD TVs on offer from both Sony and TCL, I think this versus will be fun. Never mind whether it makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of folks want to know how close the TCL can get to the much more expensive Sony, what with its aggressive mini LED backlight and dimming zone count that on paper should just trounce the Sony. I like that word, trounce. I need to trot that one out a little more often, note to self. But hey, besides all that, we're about to see these two TVs go against each other in some kind of way at the upcoming Value Electronics TV shootout. I'm the MC for that event, by the way, so I'll see you there. Also, expect a few vlogs from me coming out of that. Best way to make sure you catch everything is to subscribe to our channel and bang the gong that is YouTube's notification bell. I do appreciate the support. Anyway, consider this a little preview of what we may see at that shootout. All right, here we go. In terms of design, these TVs have some notable differences worth keeping in mind. The TCL QM8 uses a centralized pedestal stand that will allow the TV to sit on just about any size table. The Sony X95L, however, is gonna need a larger stand. Now you can position the feet more toward the center of the TV for a narrower media cabinet, but as I've got it set up here, the X95L is taking up all but five inches of our BDI console 79 inch width. Otherwise, the TVs are sufficiently sleek and shallow with trim bezels and virtually no difference in mounting depth. As far as aesthetics go, it's a draw. When it comes to the remotes, I like the slightly more compact size of the Sony. And when it comes to button layout, the Sony comes with some advantages like this wrench button that brings up a pop-up menu for quick access to the most popular settings. But folks, the TCL remote is backlit and that's gonna get you the dub every single time. The remote category goes to TCL. Now on to sound. I know we're used to TVs just not sounding good, but both TCL and Sony have put in some effort here. And I know a lot of folks figure that if you spend this much on a TV, it needs to sound at least decent. Well, folks, what can I say? I'm not in love with how either TV sounds. I do have to say though, that I saw a review somewhere where the reviewer said that X95L lacks bass, and that is straight up false. If you run the acoustic calibration system in the Sony X95L, you will absolutely get some bass out of this TV. More bass, as a matter of fact, than the TCL QM8, which has a dedicated subwoofer on the back. With the Sony, you also have some special integration with some of Sony's soundbars or systems like the HTA9, where the TV can act as a center channel. So again, not super stoked on the audio from either TV. I definitely encourage you to consider at least a soundbar, but there is a clear winner in the audio category and it's the Sony. Now I wanna talk about the Google TV integration. And before you go skip in this section because you think you don't care, Google TV is Google TV, right? Wrong. Not all Google TV implementations end up being the same. Now I'm not gonna waste your time talking about how the menus are slightly different or that Sony makes it easier to turn off eco mode or how they each have different versions of gaming dashboards. No, what I wanna talk about is an issue that, well, Perhaps it's always existed at some level, but it's really starting to rear its ugly head now. Rather than describe it, I'm just gonna show you. Back when I reviewed the TCL QM8, I watched a lot of the Good Good Golf YouTube channel as well as the GM Golf channel, Luke Kwan, Bubby, those cats. Speaking of whom, every time I see them buy a TV without calling me up, I die inside a little bit. Fellas, holla at your boy. Anyway, I was beginning to think that Colin and Ryder needed some color grading workshops because the skin tones on those videos was not great. Like everyone looked sunburned. And while I know a lot of those folks are getting plenty of sun out there on the links, I know they aren't supposed to look that 
red. Turns out there's nothing wrong with Colin and Ryder's color grading skills. The issue is the YouTube app built into the TCL QM8. And I've seen it on the 65 inch and the 98 inch as well. Once the stream hits 4K resolution, here comes the red. You can see how Grace looks straight up lobster-like on the TCL, but more pinkish on the Sony when we used each TV's built-in YouTube app. But when we switch to the Apple TV as a source and play the same content, everything looks better on both TVs actually, but the horrible redness on everything that we saw on the TCL when it was using its built-in app, that's now gone. Lest you think this is a TCL problem though, check out the Max app built into the Sony X95L. Here we have Justice League queued up, it's in Dolby Vision by the way, and as you can see, the left and right pillar box bars are gray instead of black. The blacks are lifted here, at least in Dolby Vision. I actually thought this was an issue with the TV, but again, switch to the Apple TV 4K and use its Max app, pumped through to the TV via HDMI, and the pillar box bars are now black as they should be. The takeaway here is that I am losing my trust in the apps built into TVs. Not all are bad, it's not always problematic, but sometimes it is. And do you wanna wonder if you're getting the best picture or not? I don't. For that reason, I'm seriously thinking about just not using built-in apps anymore. Not until all this gets ironed out but I'm not sure it's ever gonna get ironed out. Look, there's a whole video I need to do about this, but for now, when it comes to Google TV implementation, I can't declare a winner, it's a draw. But in this case, the draw is for an L, because I could never call a winner here. I will say though that I prefer the Sony TV's interface. TCL does have a live streaming TV service built in that you can use instead of Pluto or Freevee or whatever. But at the end of the day, I like clicking around the Sony better, even though I wish the remote I used to do the clicking was TCL's. Reluctantly, Sony gets the win for interface. Hey, so I wanted to take a moment to unbox this package that Reolink sent me. I know Reolink has a series of battery-operated dual-band Wi-Fi security cameras, all of which offer 4K Ultra HD resolution, and each of their models offers some unique features depending on what you need. So it looks like we've got three of Reolink's options here. The Argus Eco Ultra with color night vision. Wow, you don't see that very often. Here we have the Argus PT Ultra. This one offers 355 degree panning and 140 degrees of tilt, so there's no hiding from this one. And then this, wow, that's nice and lightweight. Yeah, this one is the Argus 3 Ultra. So I wanna check out the pan tilt action. So let's get that Argus PT Ultra installed and have a look. Okay, so this installation has been super easy. The huge convenience here is that the cameras are battery operated, so you don't have to run power to them. You just recharge them via USB-C, which you see here. And they offer dual band Wi-Fi, so no need to run ethernet cables. Now that we're connected, let's pull up the real link app and have a look. Oh yeah, as you can see, this is very high resolution thanks to the 4K UHD sensor, which means we can actually zoom in and see important details. And one of the other great things about Reolink Argus cameras is that they can detect humans versus vehicles versus animals. So when you get notifications, you know whether you need to check your feed or not. Love that. And yeah, I feel like not much of anything can hide from this camera with this kind of pan and tilt range. Plus it's got full two-way audio so you can speak to whoever is on the camera or just listen in to what's happening. So check out Reolink and their entire line of Argus 4K Wi-Fi security cameras to figure out which one will work best for you. We've got links to the products and a discount code down in the description. Thanks to Reolink for sponsoring this portion of our video. Now we're gonna start moving into picture-related categories as we make our way to picture quality elements. Let's start with some commentary on the anti-glare. I've heard you, you wanna hear how good the anti-glare is. Well folks, it's hard to show you on camera, but I'm gonna try. The Sony has a slight edge here. While both TVs are gonna show our studio light on a pitch black screen when the studio light is right behind the camera, the Sony tones down the brightness of the reflection a little bit better. Once you turn the TVs on, the anti-glare on both TVs is sufficient. I do have to remind everyone though that sun beaming through your window behind you is going to show up on your TV screen. There is no screen treatment technology in the world that can fully eclipse the power of the sun. Not yet anyway. I know there's some crazy light absorbing materials out there, but they aren't in TVs yet. So just know that both have decent anti-glare. The Sony X95Ls is just a touch better. Ding.
Next is off angle viewing, and I'm not gonna waste your time because the contest is not even close. The Sony X95L has stellar off angle performance and the TCL QM8's off angle performance is not good at all. You can see that in these shots, once you're off dead center of the TCL QM8, it's brightness advantages, which I'll discuss here in a moment, those brightness advantages just disappear. The Sony looks brighter from every angle other than dead straight on. So off angle viewing, Sony's got this one. Now for the part I think you've all been waiting for, the picture quality comparison. Now you may have already guessed that Sony is gonna dominate here, but I'm gonna ask that you stick around and watch until the end because not only am I gonna explain why I prefer Sony's picture quality, but there's a bit of a twist at the end that you might not see coming. Still, slap this video with a like if you think you already know what my takeaway is gonna be. Let's start with brightness, shall we? There is no doubt that the TCL QM8 is a significantly brighter TV overall. Now by overall, what I mean is that the TCL QM8's average picture level, or APL, is significantly higher than the Sony X95L's APL. We've prepared three series of clips for you to look at here, and shout out to Zeke for not only jumping through a bunch of hoops to capture these for you, but for going through the editing process to make sure they look right, because this is tricky stuff. The first run of footage here is exposed for the TCL QM8. As such, it's gonna look more or less normal, while the Sony X95L is gonna look dim by comparison. It is extremely important that you understand that this is not a real life representation of what you see in person. Because of our cameras and workflow and whatever you're watching this video on, uh, we can't show you all the stops of brightness that you can see in real life. So the Sony X95L looks abnormally dim here, but hopefully you can get a sense for the fact that the TCL QM8 on average is significantly brighter. Now we're gonna show you the opposite. This is all HDR content, by the way, with the backlight systems maxed out. Here you can see that by comparison, the TCL looks aggressively bright, while the Sony is clearly putting out an excellent picture. If I show you one, I have to show you the other. And all of this because we can't show you both at the same time, not without even more editing hijinks. Now this third reel is after I have backed down the TCL's brightness from 100, which is the default setting in HDR movie mode, to about 65, which perceptually matches the Sony X95L. And we use some camera measurements too to make sure it was about the same. And what I'm hoping you'll see here is that the TCL still looks brighter overall. But what I really don't want you to miss from this brightness discussion is the following here. While the TCL QM8 has higher average picture level, the Sony's HDR highlights are just as bright as the TCL QM8s. And because the Sony doesn't over brighten everything, its contrast is therefore significantly better. So even though the TCL QM8 is brighter, I like what the Sony is doing with its brightness power a little bit better. So the brightness category goes to Sony. We see Sony's more refined approach having a positive net impact on color as well. The TCL QM8 has brighter colors, but they are ever so slightly washed out compared to the Sony, which is producing bright color with depth and richness that the QM8 just can't quite match. And as I mentioned in the reviews for each of these TVs individually, the Sony's out-of-box color performance and white balance in the custom picture preset is extremely accurate, whereas the TCL QM8s is not as accurate. And besides that, it's harder to adjust toward accuracy using the CMS and white balance adjustments in the TV. In fact, I've heard from some folks that they just didn't work for them at all. That's not as damning a statement as it may sound though. Uh, stick with me here. So for color performance, the Sony gets the win. Now in terms of black level performance, and I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of tie in backlight performance here too. The TCL QM8 produces what appears to be slightly less halo around bright objects on pitch black backgrounds than the Sony X95L. And I do mean slight. Also, you have to be dead on angle in order for that to be seen on the TCL. However, without having these TVs stacked side by side, I don't know that you would be able to draw that conclusion because the Sony X95L is so good at hiding its dimming zones and the contrast is so good on the TV that you aren't gonna pick up on the tiny bit of halo effect that is present. Also, the Sony has better shadow detail than the TCL, which seems to achieve its inky blacks at the slight expense of a little shadow detail. Now, I'm not sure how much folks would miss those shadow details unless they were looking specifically for them, 
But if I have to pick a winner in the black level and backlight control category, I got to give it to the Sony X95L. As for motion, this is another win for the Sony because Sony's motion processing is just so dang good. But I want to point out that the TCL QM8 is no slouch. I see a bit more judder and stutter on the TCL QM8, but that's only because I have to not use motion smoothing at all for my tastes. Whereas with the Sony, I can turn Cinemotion on low and avoid soap opera effect while getting slightly smoother cinematic motion. So for motion, it's a win for Sony, but not by a landslide. Now for upscaling and image processing. I'm putting these two in the same category for the convenience of talking about them concisely, but please remember that upscaling is the art of taking a lower resolution image for which there is only information for a fraction of the pixels on the screen and upscaling that image so that it fills the whole screen. Without upscaling, a 1080p HD image would take up just one quarter of this screen because a 4K TV has about four times the number of pixels. You gotta go from 2 million or so in 1080p and ramp that up to about 8.3 million for 4K. You can tell the difference in upscaling between two TVs when looking for sharpness of the image. And the Sony just has a sharper, more detailed picture in general. So when upscaling 1080p and 720p sources, it's still gonna look a bit sharper just by nature. But for cleanup of low bit depth content, like a lot of the stuff that we stream on YouTube, for example, the difference is not very stark, actually. Here's some content streaming in 720p from Sling TV. And at first, we can see plenty of color banding on both TVs. But as soon as I implement smooth gradation features on each TV, they both clean up nicely. And in fact, the TCL QM8 does a slightly better job. Of course, when the picture is moving, the Sony is a little faster on the cleanup job. So when we stack it all together, the Sony looks slightly better, but the TCL is actually doing a remarkably decent job and I'm not upset about it at all. I could easily live with the QM8. Now I'm gonna briefly touch on gaming. Briefly, because these TVs are very close in terms of their gaming features and performance. Both TVs have a lot to brag about. The Sony is touted as being the best mate for the PS5 because of course it is. The TCL offers THX certified game mode and FreeSync Premium Pro. It can also go up to 144 Hertz if you need that, you hardcore PC gamers out there. I mean, so far as I can tell, both of these TVs are superb for gaming. The HDR gaming performance is outstanding. Of course, the Sony's color is a bit more accurate, but both have super low input lag, maybe not on the LG G3's level, but very low. The backlights don't seem to freak out in VRR modes. It's all very good. I'm gonna hand TCL the gaming win for one reason and one reason only. It's high refresh rate ports are separate from the eARC port. That's it. If you have more than one gaming device that goes above 4K 60 Hertz, the TCL allows you to connect both and still have your eARC port available for a cell bar or AV receiver. So if you've been keeping tabs, well, we have been keeping tabs for you too, we can all see that the Sony ran away with most of the categories won here. But there's one category we have not discussed yet, and that is value. Let me break it down for you like this. I prefer the Sony X95L. I would be thrilled to own this TV. I'm sad that as soon as I finish shooting the last couple of minutes of this video here, I have to pack that beast up so it can be picked up tomorrow. It will be missed. If cost were no object, I'd choose the Sony X95L in a heartbeat. It is, by most of the measures that we've covered here, a superior TV in terms of accuracy, and it just happens to put out the picture quality that I personally like best. But here's the thing. Cost is an object for most folks, and that includes me. If I needed to buy an 85-inch TV using my money or the money of one of my close family or friends, you think I'm gonna tell them to go buy the X95L? No, because that price is just way higher than what most folks are prepared to pay. I'm not saying that Sony has no business charging that much. It's the best LCD TV on the market right now. Mark that puppy up, Sony. Be proud of what you've made. It's an elite TV, sell it for an elite price and let those who can own it have the bragging rights. No, folks, even though I wish the TCL QM8 did a few things differently or better, I'm buying the QM8 all day. Yes, I'll know in the back of my head that it is technically overbrightened. I'll know that the colors could technically be a bit richer than they are. And I'll especially know that I'm not getting the best picture if I don't have one of the two or three best seats in the house. But when you strip the QM8 out of this admittedly unfair comparison, 
it looks pretty terrific to most folks. So while the Sony X95L wins on technicality, and I'm sure it'll come out on top at the Value Electronics King of TV shootout, at least compared to the QM8, the winner of this shootout for the vast majority of you watching, and for the vast majority of folks trying to purchase an 85 inch TV, it's the TCL QM8. Thanks as always for watching everyone. We've been trying a slightly new versus format. What do you think of it? Will you leave me a comment about that down below? And while you're down there, consider giving us a like and a subscribe, ring that bell. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.